This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three. Lovely. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Masters Edition live on Facebook. Tonight, in our special Christmas show, we are going to be joined by Denny Curis from uh, your, the, the wonderful online marketplace. And we'll also be joined by a very special guest all the way from America. So stay tuned, and we'll have all our usual fun and games too. So, yay! Yay! yay. yay. Good evening! Hello, everybody! Welcome to the Mastering Edition! And here we are. Yeah, it's only one week to go, and then that's it. It's it'll soon all be over. So, <laughs> but so here we are. It's uh, our last, uh, uh, well, the Christmas show just before Christmas. We are going to be around over Christmas, um, and we will give you some more details um, about that as the uh, show progresses. Um, but um, for now, uh, we've got lots coming up this evening. Uh, we've got music, we've got Christmas music, we've got special guests. Uh, we've got uh, Dini from um, House of D stroke hashtag, as, uh, as Matt was saying. We've got all our segments. We've got reindeers, by the looks of it, Tracy. Yes, look at this cute little guy in shot. Look how sparkly he is. And I have little reindeer antlers and a little reindeer little kind of toy. Oh. It's so cute. So cute. I'm just going to hold on to him all, all evening, little guy. You know, yeah, there yeah, you go. She, she, you're having a, a, a very merry reindeer party of your own there, I think, Tracy. Indeed. I'm all about the reindeer this evening, dear. You know. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. And, uh, and Matt, you've got your, well, your teeny, hat tiny hat. on your head. Tiny. <laughs> Tell us about your big head, Matt. Yeah, I've got a massive head. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, for, it's for my massive brain. That's why. This massive brain yeah. is housed by a massive head, which the tiny hat can just not cover. Mm -mm. Mm. There we are. <laughs> I tried. Well, we've, we've already um, uh, said that it's something to do with uh, your massive brain. Yes. Uh, because you, of course, are our um, uh, resident historian here on uh, uh, the Maastricht edition. Yes. Of which you will be talking about some historic stuff uh, uh, later on. Um, but before we get to that far, um, how's Maastricht, Tracy? You are in the centre of Maastricht. Um, as many people know, of course, um, things have uh, locked down completely in the city centre, as it has all over the Netherlands. Yes. Um, what, what's it like there at the moment? Well, at the moment, Joe... It's rather dark and quiet, oh, but uh, yes, um, but uh, it's uh, yeah. There, there's been an impact, of course. The um, the shops have pretty much shut down, apart from places like Crowdvat and the pharmacies and the supermarkets and so on. So you can imagine this is uh, having a, a rather strange impact to the atmosphere and vibe. So all the Christmas lights are on and there's kind of nobody around really. It's a little bit strange. That said, there were still a few people milling about today. So I guess. Uh, Maybe some people still have some things to get at shops that are open or indeed to get takeaways and things because that's at least still allowed. But yeah, strange times, absolutely. So the next five weeks shall be a little bit uh, different, but uh, I expect it's probably the same in Eindhoven where Matt is as well. well I've not ventured out. No. I've stayed in the house. Mm. I've just stayed local. Yeah. So there's lots of cars around, actually. I don't know where everyone's going. Yeah, indeed. You wonder, I suppose, to pick up things, I suppose. But uh, yeah, we're also staying in pretty much. I mean, a lot of almost everything we're doing now is online shopping, online ordering of food, this kind of thing. Dave ventures to the supermarket once a week uh, for the basics. And, and actually, it's pretty much it. So, uh, yeah, but uh, indeed, I, I understand that the lockdown in Netherlands has made it's made news on the BBC. Yes. And it's, it's been on the news on Irish television, RTE. So it's actually it's it seems to be quite a big thing uh, that it's been reported on in a lot of the other European countries. So, um, of course, it's too late anyway. Yeah, well, 
Yeah. Uh, I guess. Yeah. It's... Well, we we, we, we can all uh, uh, comment on uh, how we would have dealt with uh, COVID ourselves this year in whichever country we're in. I'm sure, but uh, uh, it's it's tough going for everybody. And of course, yeah. as uh, as we were talking about with the Dina last week, it is going to be tough over Christmas. But we shall be here. We are going to be with you over the Christmas and New Year period. Um, we're going to have a, a couple of extra shows uh, 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 during the Christmas week, but we'll talk more about that later. Yes. Um, we've got a big competition that's going to be announced this evening as well, so stay tuned for that. All very exciting. Adam's in the house. Good evening, Adam. Nice to have you with us. Um, we have got a very special guest who's going to be joining us later, and we're keeping that under wraps. Um, we've got, <laughs> there's a little clue for, for, for those yes, regular viewers. Yes. yes, they will know. <laughs> they will know. The premium viewers, as it were. Yes, premium viewers. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yes, that person will be uh, uh, joining us later. Um, but because we've got so much going on this evening, I think maybe it'd be a good idea just to jump straight into Matt's review and see what he has to say about uh, what you recommended, Tracy. Could you remember? No, it was uh, you. Just... you Joe. It was me. Oh, gosh. You, it was me, wasn't it? You recommended Marvin Gaye oh, last week. <laughs> <time. laughs> <laughs> How many pellets have you had this evening, dear? Not enough. <laughs> Let's try that again. Matt, I recommended an album for you last week, you and it did, was Marvin yeah. Gaye. Marvin Gaye's Greatest Hits, that was it. And this was a Greatest Hits album that had some of his solo stuff and some of his um, duets done uh, over the years, um, uh, covering quite a few years of his career before he was uh, sadly taken from us way too early. Um, I assume that you were listening to this while you were cooking? Uh, no. Oh, oh. Paint, painting? No. Oh. I was hanging the washing up. Oh, okay. I was going to say next. Oh. Hanging the washing up. But that the was wet. a long... Uh, okay, but the album well, goes off for the whole time. album. What part of the album? What was I doing? I can't remember. I was doing something online. Okay. Where I could listen. Okay, so what did you think? Um, I liked some of the songs. Um, but to be honest, I, I didn't hugely enjoy it. Um, I don't know. I like the, the, the one, I can't remember what it's called. It's like, Let's Get It On or something, that one. And then I was just like, I've heard this in like films where there's like a yes. romantic moment or something. Okay. Quite a famous song, that one, yeah. yes. Um, but I don't know, it just, it wasn't really my thing. Um, I enjoyed some of it, some of it was quite like nice and, I don't know, like sort of relaxing, chilled music, but okay. some of it was just a bit like, <sighs> Oh dear. Ah, okay. right, Joe. Hmm. Oh. Well, um, there's going to be Marvin Gaye fans worldwide at the moment um, who are not going to be very happy about that. Uh, you're not going to be getting any Christmas cards from them, Matt, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it is a little disappointing, I have to say, uh, because his voice was, you know, oh, it was just beautiful. And, uh, and I, you know, some of the, the songs that he sang, some of the lyrics were... Uh, quite political, some of them, uh, but mm. the others, yeah, were very romantic. And the duets, I loved the duets that he did, you know, with Tammy Terrell, one of my favourites. But okay, well, you gave it a shot. I did. So you're not going to listen to Marvin Gaye again, I assume? Mm, probably not, no. No. But he is played on the radio quite a lot. So, you know, I heard it through the radio, for example. You were here. Mm. An awful lot. That's always coming up. Okay, so how many mats did you give it? Um, I think I would give it a six. Six. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, it's better than a five. It's sure. better than it. It's over over half, Joe. It's over half. So <laughs> it's uh, over yeah. Half. Okay. Right. Well, I'll 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 take that and um. <laughs> just just go. To have an extra slug of wine, I think. <laughs> she looks very it's depressed, Matthew. <laughs> it's my, Christmas Christmas. Has, my Christmas cheer has gone down the pan. 
Okay. Well, let's see if we can lighten the mood a little bit because um, I'm hoping, Tracy, that the album that you have going to recommend this week for Matt is probably Christmassy. Well, you know, I was thinking about this. Should I go Christmassy? Should I not? And I thought, yes, I will. I'm going Christmas album. And I, Joe, between you and me, I'm pretty certain this album is going to get full marks from our Matthew. Oh, why? I think, Matthew, I, know why. I think you know why too. Matthew, it's almost Christmas and it's almost a special day for you as well. And with all that good cheer in mind, I have chosen for you the Michael Bulbaker Christmas. <laughs> wow. Yay! Oh, I've been listening to this all week and it's it will warm the cockles of your heart. This is a Christmas album from 2011, so it's been around a while. But for me, Mr. Bouvelet, he's Mr. Christmas. And sorry, Santa. Well, you know, he comes a close second. <laughs> Um, this is the one you want. This is the deluxe edition. Um, I'll send you later the, the full playlist. Um, he has a couple of duets on here as well. Um, surprisingly, one with Shania Twain, actually, which is quite interesting. But I think you'll love this. Have it with a glass of wine or a glass of eggnog or, or something festive and just play it through and I, you'll have your foot tapping, I'm sure, and be full of good Christmas cheer by the end. Okay. There we are. Yay. Well, I have to ask, uh, uh, Matt, as you are a bit of a, a Buble fan, um, have you not already got this album? I don't really have any albums, actually. I just <laughs> use online first. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, me, Joe. Not, well, now you've, you can listen to this one, Matthew, and maybe add it to your collection. Yes, I could. I could. Oh, oh, excellent. Excellent. Well, it is good. <laughs> I have to say personally, Andy Williams' Christmas album, that's my go-to album every every time. But uh, um, yeah, Michael Bublé it is a good album. So, okay, well, you have uh, a week to listen to it. It is actually a good week to be listening to it, it being Christmas it and all. So, Maybe uh, I like my mince pies, I can listen to it then. There you go. Oh, perfect, Excellent. Matthew. Excellent. Wear well, your hat and... <laughs> Maybe not with that. We, <laughs> we shall be finding out next week, of course, what Matt has to think about this oh. particular album. Now, we have, oh, Tracy. Oh, uh, Tracy has, has something to say. Not next week, because on the 24th, we're actually not broadcasting. But we are back on the Sunday. So we will hear about it from Matt in a week and a few days. We will. Yeah. You're right. Absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely right. So uh, we have a special guest who's going to be coming on soon. Before that special guest, I think it's time for a little musical interlude of our own here. Oh, so really? we are um, we are delighted to say that uh, the lovely Michelle Lynn, concert pianist extraordinaire, um, who is uh, one of our regulars on the show, she has recorded uh, a lovely little Christmas song uh, for us now. So here what is I Michelle think? Lynn with her chestnuts roasting over an open fire. The Christmas song, lovely. Hey everyone at the Maastricht edition, this is Michelle Lynn and from my home to yours, I want to wish you the happiest of holidays with your family and friends. This is chestnuts roasting on an open fire. <laughs>
Oh, wasn't that lovely? Oh, thank you so much, Michelle. Absolutely beautiful. That's really got us in the mood. Um, now, before uh, we get to our special guest on the show, we have had a little message from Adam. Sorry, Matt, but he says he's lighting his torch and marching to your castle right now to burn it down. Don't oh. mess with me, gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Marvin Gaye Ver fans out there, probably including Ellie as well, who's just joined us. Good evening, Ellie. Nice to have you on board. <laughs> so yes, you've uh, you, you, you've upset a few people there. <laughs> yeah, this, this... everyone's entitled to an opinion. It's a free country. Yes, Absolutely. and it's the season of goodwill. Absolutely. <laughs> and at the season of goodwill, it's time for us to invite. Um, a member of our family back to the team. Here he is, Jason. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. What a, what a kind of introduction was that? a season of goodwill, and then you show me. That's <laughs> <laughs> well for yeah, our fine. premium viewers, of course. Everybody knows who Jason is. Jason uh, was our technical director uh, before he was snatched away back to the good old US of A. Um, a few weeks ago, and uh, hit, where are you now exactly, Jason? <laughs> oh, you can't tell by the uh, stunning scenery behind me. Looks cool, no. I, have, I have actually no clue where I am. I'm somewhere, <laughs> uh, somewhere in the mid uh, continental U.S. I, I believe you're picking up your car. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, for some reason. Uh, so uh, for those that weren't. Uh, yeah, I had to had to relocate back to the U.S. to to try to stabilize things over here, and I think I've done a pretty good job so far. You've, you've done fantastic. Yes, well, well done, you. Um, yeah. You arrived. Trump uh, resigned, didn't he? Something like that. And yeah. uh, and, uh, and and now we've got uh, some other geezer in who uh, we're, we're hoping is going to do a much better job. He certainly couldn't do a worse one. But we're not going to get all political here. No, they're all are, nice. you all, are you all settled over there, Jason? Absolutely not. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> How's Jackie and Jameson? Oh, the family's doing doing well. They're uh, waiting for me to come back uh, uh, to keep from murdering from one another, I think. Uh, but you know how families are. It's, it's the holidays. We don't yet have our, uh, have our household. It's somewhere. Um, somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, on a boat, I hope. Maybe not at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. But right, yeah. So it's it's been a life of glamping, as it were. Right. So yeah, for the unmotivated, glamping is glamorous camping. As a yes. Glamorous. Yes. I knew yes. what glamping was. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and and, uh, uh, how do you expect to be spending Christmas this year? Uh. Bare bones, actually. Uh, so, uh, so uh, for those that didn't know, we actually relocated uh, to North Dakota. And if you don't know where that is, don't feel bad. Uh, <laughs> I, I can actually hear some distant laughing. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's everyone around me. <laughs> no, uh, no. So we're we're practically uh, Canadian. And with that comes, uh, I think that the last uh, temperature reading I sent you guys was somewhere around negative 26. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's oh, a bit yeah. chilly. No, it's it's a it's a, where I'm at now in, in Nebraska, uh, of all places. It's a, it's a nice balmy uh, 12, I think, at the moment. It's wonderful. Ooh. Yeah, call, call me weird, but I, when I hear Nebraska, it rhymes with Alaska, so I think oh, it's probably really cold. <laughs> Oh no, it's absolutely freezing. I'm I'm, I'm freezing my bits off here. But they are uh, a bit more fall than they would be at home. So here's one for you uh, that I haven't figured out as an English speaker from the U.S. So uh, the state K A N S A S, like the band, is pronounced how? Kansas. Okay. Okay. And there's a state that's spelled A R K A N S A S. Ah, Arkansas. Arkansas. Yes, Arkansas. <laughs> I, that's yeah. that's going to be the second item on my agenda. I've already fixed the presidency, and now I'm here to fix the Kansas, Excellent. Arkansas. Excellent. Yeah. 
Okay, well, that, that, that's really good. Um, um, it's, it's, it's a worthwhile cause. Um, I don't actually know how big Arkansas SAS is and how many people that you're actually going to piss off uh, doing that, but uh, um, I'm... I, 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 uh, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing the result of that, and uh, yeah. and, and maybe the there, ensuing riots. Yeah, and there's there's absolutely nothing more important than that right now in the world. So I, I think that my priorities are entirely straight. Straight. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> look. We've all got to have a hobby. Absolutely. I, Whatever I gets you could, today. <laughs> I wish I could show you. I'm actually, uh, uh, if you can see here, uh, uh, there's a sign in the. Nebraska land, because uh, I thought that oh. would be clever, but it's actually, it's actually a tire shop, and so there's a bunch of folks in these giant trucks that are driving by looking at me, uh, uh, talking into my phone, uh, <laughs> wondering what's going on. I, I don't know if you see, there's one guy that circled around me twice. I see oh. a guy in the pickup truck. I'm, I, I, the I, got, guy, I got eyes on him. <laughs> Secret service is on to you. Hey, it's a guy at the back. <laughs> Well, Jason, it's, it's lovely to see you. Before we go, uh, oh. I don't know if you can, how is everyone spending their holidays? Because I need, I need a bit of cheer over here. Well, do you know what? We're, we're all going to be in our separate little houses, but we are going to be broadcasting over the Christmas period because we're, we're all staying in the Netherlands. So um, you will be able to catch our gorgeous faces um, over Christmas and New Year. So if you want to join us, you're more than welcome. We're going to be here. Um, we hope you and yours have a fantastic Christmas um, together. We miss you so much. Um, it's really, really lovely to see you. And, uh, and you guys as well. And uh, try and keep warm. Um, it's it's oh, a shame. They're gone, right? so it's I'm um, I'm just resigned to the to the frigidity. <laughs> Speaking of frigid for, 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 for that as well, uh, Denise has just said the background of Jason's video looks like the setting of the hills of eyes. Oh, oh my god, that's actually uh, axe, so hopefully it doesn't end up the same way. I really hope that's <laughs> fingers crossed. That's when you get home safely. <laughs> okay, sweetheart, fabulous to see you. Have a great Christmas, have a wonderful new year, and uh, send all our love to uh, the family. Likewise. We'll, we'll see you guys soon. Bye for now. Bye. Bye, Bye <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Oh. I feel a bit I know. I know. It's, uh, well, it is, isn't it? For, uh, for, for any of our... Um, uh new people out there um yeah he's uh he he was with us for a couple of years on uh, on the maastricht edition and uh he was very very important uh he set up all of the online stuff that we're doing now um and as i said we now have fear dabs who's in the background you don't see him but he's doing an amazing job um but it was jason that set it all up for us in the first place so um yes all good all good. Yeah. So, um, oh my God, I've done know. it again. I haven't plugged in the pin C. What is the matter with me? <laughs> Goodness, Not woman, you got to lay off the port before the show, really. <laughs> Matthew, well, what are we doing? after dinner drink, isn't it? I'm, well, I don't, no, I'm not quite sure. I just think they have port before dinner as well. Do you Sorry. have port before or after dinner? Or is it well, both? Port. port, right? So, Joe, jo, you don't drink red port, do you? No, I don't drink port. And if I was going to drink, I would drink it after dinner. All oh, right. I must have a chat with my mother-in-law because she usually has a port before dinner. Hey, look. Which is fine. So does mine. Who are we to judge? <laughs> I mean, it's good stuff. <laughs> we're doing a radio broadcast with our glasses of wine, for goodness sake. So cheers. It's Christmas, Joe. Merry oh, Christmas. As if we need an excuse. As if we need an excuse. Okay, well, we've had a lovely uh, uh, catch up with Jason there, but I think it's probably time for us to sort of mellow out a little bit, a little calm yes. down, chill out, relax. Time to get into Zen mode. It is um, the last um, time before Christmas that we are going to be 
chilling out with a glass of wine, our feet up, as the whole of Maastricht comes to a grinding halt. Because it is time for this. What the hell was that? That was the Christmas special. <laughs> that was. <laughs> Yeah, lots of ho ho ho. Thanks for that. Uh, hey, today, <laughs> today is Thursday, the seventeenth of December. I got the date right. Yay! <laughs> Christmas miracle. Uh, on this day in 1538, Pope Paul II excommunicates King Henry VIII of England, and we Ooh. know what happened after that. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, weddings galore. Ugh. Can you imagine, actually, uh, in those days, being invited to all these weddings? I mean, you start running out of gifts. God, can you imagine? What would a girl wear? Yeah, I know, exactly, oh, Matthew. Yeah, what for you, Tracy, you would be in, in dress dilemma. Me, I'd be thinking, <laughs> how many bread makers does a king need, for goodness sake? <laughs> Which bra should I wear? <laughs> You also be thinking, like, how long will this bride last? Is it worth an expensive gift, you know, like one that's just that's enough? Fair point. Yeah, it is a fair point, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a, I, I think it was a very confusing time for, for all his nearest and dearest. In 1843, Henry Cole, the founder of London's V&A Museum, commissions the first printing of a Christmas card. Ooh. So they've been around since 1843. And In making a comeback this year, Christmas cards, apparently. Oh, was that so? Apparently there's more sold this year than ever before. Oh, okay. That's interesting to know. In 1900, the first prize of 100,000 francs was offered for communications with extraterrestrials. However, Martians were excluded because they were considered oh. to be too easy. Oh, I don't know if okay. that thousand francs was actually uh, uh, given. It was offered, but I don't know if it was actually given and received by anybody. But uh, yeah, Martians not included. They wouldn't be happy about that. In 1938, on this very day, no. discovery of nuclear fission using uranium by Otto Hahn and his assistants, Fritz Strassmann. And in 1962, on this very day, the Beatles' first British TV appearance was in People and Places. I have not heard of this show, but that was their first TV appearance. Now, we recently Good lost a lovely Sean Connery. And on this day in 1964, Goldfinger, the third James Bond film starring uh, Honor Blackman, premiered in London. The following year, mm. in 1965, the Dutch government shuts Limburg's coal mine. Oh, oh wow, yeah. And in Big impact. It was a big impact. In 1967, Harold Holt, the Prime Minister of Australia, vanishes in mysterious circumstances while swimming near Melbourne. Ooh. Did he say that again? Do you know what? I was, I was gonna, I was, when this came up, I was like, I'm gonna have a look at that. And then I thought, do you know what? I'm not gonna have a look at that. I'm just <laughs> gonna leave it out there. It's mysterious <laughs> circumstances. Have a Google after this. <laughs> then you can have a Google after this if you want to. But I just thought, no, just leave it sitting out there. If people want to know, they can have a look. In 1969, on this very day, USAF closes Project Blue Book, concluding no evidence of extraterrestrial spaceships behind thousands of UFO sightings. So in 1969, I just wanted to point out, this is the period, of course, where... Half the planet is stoned off of their heads. And apparently there was thousands and thousands of UFO sightings and not a single one was proved to be of an extraterrestrial spaceship. Uh, oh. Is it a coincidence? Mm -hmm. I'm just, yeah. We'll never know, Joe. We'll, we'll, never, we'll never, never know. know. In 1971, Radio Bangladesh begins transmitting. And in 1980. Eighty-six. Mrs. Davina Thompson makes medical history by having the first heart, lung, and liver transplant at Patna wow. Hospital in Cambridge, the, uh, in the UK. Big deal. Wow. Now here's That's the thing: How long has the Simpsons been going? A long time. Nineteen eighty-nine. 
Oh, there you go. I thought the 90s. 89. 1989, wow. Simpsons, created by uh, Max Gruning, uh, premieres on Fox TV as a full animated series. And the first episode was called Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire. Yeah. <laughs> how, how appropriate. <laughs> how very appropriate. Um, in 2012, NASA completes a successful mission to map the moon's gravity field. And in 2013, Angela Merkel is elected Chancellor of Germany for a third term. And finally, on this day in 2019, Australia mm -hmm. has its hottest day ever with an average temperature, just an average temperature of 40.9 across the Truth. whole country. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Crows. That, that's that's a little warm. That's a little warm. And birthdays. In 1936, Tommy Steele, considered to be the first British rock and roll star of the UK, was born in London. Mm. In 1936, Pope Francis, the Catholic Pope, that is the oh. Pope at the moment. Uh, he's, having his, he's having his birthday today, born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. In 1949, uh -huh. Paul Rogers, one of my all-time favourite singers, uh, was born on this very day. And Bill Pullman, American actor, famous for League of Their Own and Independence Day, was born in New York in 1953. Now, we do have a few Ooh. birthdays here. Uh, yeah. Locally, Sam Wheely, she had her birthday yesterday. Oh, yeah. ah, friend of the show. Ermeline Hansen, she's got her birthday on the 20th. Kevin Doyle, he's got his birthday on the 21st of December. And Alfie Samaji, she's going to uh, be a year older on the 24th of December. But rumour has it, oh, there's a special birthday happening on the 19th of December. That'll be Yay! <laughs> oh, me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like the lottery. It's you. <laughs> So happy birthday to everybody. Happy birthday to our lovely Matt. And that was this day in history. Well done, darling. And advanced birthday wishes for Matthew. Yes. Thanks very much. What exciting have you, have you got? Um, well, there's not, there's not a great list of things I can do, really. Um, I'm going to sure. make a nice dinner. Nice. Uh, make a cake. Right. It's all going to centre around food, to be honest. This is going to be a great day. Yeah. Mm. Fabulous. And you can listen to Michael Bublé. I can. There you go. Well, there you go. It's per it is the perfect uh, celebration for perfect your birthday, day. isn't it? Yes. Excellent stuff. Well, so we've got coming up, uh, Denise going to be joining us uh, very soon from uh, House of D. Uh, we've got some more musical interludes coming up. But before we get to that far, I think it's probably time for some news, Tracy. Yes. Let me get through this. <laughs> Tracy Taylor with the news. Thank you, Joe, and good evening, everyone. It's December 17th, and you're watching the Maastricht edition. First, a look at your weekend weather, and it looks like it's going to stay dry and bright for the coming days, but there is a chance of localized showers. Temperatures will be around 12 degrees. Moving to your bulletin for tonight. The number of new coronavirus cases reported reported in the Netherlands hit 12,844 today, a new single-day record for the country. There has been some criticism over Dutch ill-preparedness for vaccine distribution. It is expected that people in the Netherlands will not be vaccinated before January. Other countries like Germany, France and Denmark plan to start vaccinations before the end of this year. A 34-year-old man from Gelderland was arrested earlier this week for threatening the Prime Minister Mark Rutte following his address to the nation from the Torrentia last Monday. Police were able to identify the man and arrest him at his home. The man will appear in court next week. It is not clear if the PM pressed charges. And it's expected that the Dutch hospitality industry will suffer from the aftermath of the coronavirus crisis for years to come. Due to the long-term loss of income, and uncertainty about the future, the number of business closures and bankruptcies is expected to rise sharply next year. It has been confirmed that Dutch high street giant Hema will be taken over by the owners of supermarket chain Yumbo and an investment company called Parcom. The acquisition will be officially completed in February 2021. The takeover is worth around 440 million euros.
And flight operators TUI and Corindon announced yesterday that they would be cancelling all trips to vacation destinations following criticism about long lines of passengers at Schiphol. Earlier this week, the Netherlands entered a hard lockdown and residents had been asked not to travel if it is not essential. Night shelters will be open to all homeless people during the lockdown in the coming winter weeks, including people who are normally not entitled to a space at the shelter. Night shelters will also be open during the day so that homeless people can warm up, use facilities and get something to eat. In other news, Facebook has disabled several features in its Messenger and Instagram apps for people in Europe in order to comply with the change in privacy rules. As of December 21st, messaging apps will fall under EU rules known as the e-privacy directive. And here in the Netherlands, the word andere half meter samenleving has been chosen as the 2020 word of the year. Collins Dictionary declared lockdown the word of the year, Cambridge Dictionary went with quarantine, and the Oxford English Dictionary opted for unprecedented. Moving to local news and police have arrested three people for involvement in the recent Swarte Piet demonstrations in Maastricht. 14 others are also being questioned. And as of today, checks will be carried out at various border crossings in Limburg. For example, police and customs will have checks in Landgraf and Kerkrade to check for things like illegal fireworks being brought in from Germany. And finally tonight, with just eight more sleeps to Christmas Day, it looks unlikely that we will have a white Christmas here in Limburg. But even so, all of us here at the Maastricht Edition would like to thank you for your support this past year and to wish you all very happy holidays for the festive season. May your days be merry and bright. And that's it for tonight. For more local news, you can follow RTB News in English on Facebook and Instagram. If you are a local business, be sure to check out the Support Your Local Business South Limburg Facebook page, a joint initiative between Hashtag Maastricht and the Maastricht Edition. And if you want to discover events, concerts and cultural activities going on in Maastricht and the surrounding area, head on over to the website of our partner, maastricht.com, to check out their awesome calendar of events. You can also follow them on social media. And don't forget that you can always find us on the Maastricht Edition Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, on Redbubble and on Instagram. For all the details, check out the maastrichtedition.nl. Lovely stuff, Tracy. Thank you, darling. Nicely done. Yes, it doesn't look like we're going to get a white Christmas, does it? It doesn't. There is a rumor, however, that if there is a little snowfall, it will more likely happen in the south of the country. So it oh. could be maybe we get a smattering on Boxing Day, but it's just a rumor. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I'm not. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of snow anyway. But it's so well, pretty. It is pretty, but it's for me with the goats. It's all very messy. Oh. You know, <laughs> basically you're mess messing or like snow and goat shit and all what? sorts together is <laughs> frozen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. And I've got white tiles on the floor. You know, I mean, it's it, yeah, it's it's not good. So um, it, it's not for me. And I turn into an old woman. I really do. <laughs> when I start walking around outside with the snow and everything. So no, it doesn't work for me. What about for Denise? Though? Good evening, Denise mm. from House of D. Look how handsome you're looking. Good oh, evening. Oh. How are you, Denise? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> nice to see you. Now, so before we go any further, are you a snow person? No, have we lost it. Oh. <laughs> am I? Am I? Am I? Can you still hear me? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Okay, good. good. We can hear you. I just wanted to know if you were a snow person. <laughs> no. No, <laughs> <laughs> I like to look at it from like indoors, but I don't want to be in it. I hate the cold. Oh no! <laughs> I love the snow. <laughs> it's a perfect time for snow, then you don't have to go out. You're, You're the only one. No. <laughs> yes, I suppose with us all being locked up, we can look at it from a distance, and everybody. Yeah. Oh, look at that! Isn't it pretty? But yes, you don't have goats to look after. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> Anyway, today, nice to see you. For our uh, regular viewers, of course, we all know you as Mr. Hashtag Maastricht, who is out and about <laughs> in town um, telling us all about what's going on, which, of course, at the moment, 
is not so much. Mm, yeah. um, but um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that later. But the, the main reason you're here, of course, is because of your um, newest uh, venture, which I think is uh, is pretty much started at the beginning of the year now, I think, actually, is, uh, is House of D. Yeah. House of D merchandise, which is a very exciting project. It is, actually. Um, well, we started... Yeah. Me and Michael, my lovely boyfriend, uh, who is not in the picture. But no, he's not there. <laughs> <laughs> but we started House of D like one and a half year ago. We started out like renting a shelf in a, in a store called Jalmarikskam, which is in the city center of Maastricht. And we started selling uh, secondhand DVDs and some wallets. And... Yeah, that went pretty well. And then we bought more and the company grew and grew. And before you know it, you have like a, your own web shop, Amazon, Ball.com. Yeah, several digital uh, outlets that we have at the moment. So, yeah. And it's pretty busy because we sell, of course, like products that are great to have. Let, let, let's focus on, on on this merchandise that uh, that you're talking about because um i, I see these posts are, are pretty much on a daily basis and we're, we're actually talking about sort of film merchandise aren't we so yeah. dolls from uh, star wars or from yeah. animated films all kinds of things C could you maybe just elaborate on exactly what you're, you're selling yeah we have like products from several categories like comics like Iron Man, for example. I don't know. If I uh, love Iron Man. <laughs> I, I, I do like Robert Downey Jr. I have to admit, I'm not, I'm not so sure I'd get the same thrill from a doll. <laughs> Some do, but that's a different. <laughs> oh, it takes batteries, does it, Denise? <laughs> But we also sell all sorts of products from movies, like Lord of the Rings, like the one Game ring, the rule small. Okay. Um, Disney, Disney products, all sorts oh, of- Oh, okay. Uh, these are socks, for example, great gift for Christmas, of course, too. Lovely. For somebody, like socks. But we also have anime and manga products, like- Okay. Now, hold on a second, because anime is huge, isn't it? I personally, I don't get it. I don't understand it. It's little cartoon things with big eyes. And that's that's all I know. Can you just maybe explain to some other people out there like me who haven't really got an understanding of what anime is? Um, well, you have all sorts of different like Japanese animation styles. One of them is anime which is like the sweet characters with the big eyes. And then there's manga. Manga are either uh, comics or animated movies, and they have all sorts of like adult themes in it. Some ha even have like sexual scenes in them. So there's a difference between anime on one side and manga on the other. <laughs> manga so it's more for adults. If you're playing for your kids. No, kids. some of these animated movies are not meant for kids. Well, you, can avoid <laughs> that. And you can avoid a lot of diff like difficult other things to tell them because they can just watch the movie. <laughs> no, oh, yes. it could be educational. Uh, uh, but uh, it could cause a little embarrassment, of course, if uh, if you, you end up getting your, your, your presence a bit confused. But mm -hmm. um, I know it's really, really popular. Yeah. For example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's Pokemon. Pokemon is like popular since the end of the 90s. So it's the, um, the series has been going on for like 25 years already. And it's like growing, like its popularity is like increasing. There are these Pokemon cards to trade. There are lights, lamps, um, and you know, like the children now, most of the time they get like, into it because of their parents, because their parents used to like watch it or like trade the cards. So yeah, it's like Harry Potter, you know, like the- Yeah, the... yeah of course. Yeah. And I think also with the, um, 
uh, Comic Con uh, events mm -hmm. that go on. I mean, this is something okay. else that is, is an extension of this um, um, mad fan art uh, mm -hmm. merchandise thing that's that's going on as well. True, true, yeah. and you know, like the um, cosplay events. Uh, it's they are also like growing in number. There are more and more of them. And usually it's adults who go there, yeah. like teen, teenagers, adults, adults with their children. Uh, so Tracy's nodding away here at this adult game stroke fun. Yeah. Um, I don't think we need to, to go down too many details there with Tracy, but... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> no, I would love to go once to a Comic-Con or, you know, uh, event, because I, th I think they're everything. That is a team day out for sure. Absolutely, but you have to dress up, Joe, because it's all about <laughs> dress up. Of there's, course, I'm Wonder Woman. There's a difference between role play and cosplay. But yes, Joe, you're mixing. That's the whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> that's for another show, Denise. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Our show we're doing uh, after twelve. <laughs> I feel a TikTok moment coming on. Um, so, anybody who's into any kind of merchandising at all, then they mm -hmm. come to you. Yeah. If you don't have it, you're able to get it. Yeah, we can also we 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 have lots of um, different companies that we buy from, also in Japan, United Kingdom, the U.S., uh, in, in Europe. So whenever people have like special wishes, they can like send us a message on either WhatsApp or they can send us an email or find us on social media. And we will be able we will be able to get that product for them. Fantastic! And I'm assuming uh, your market cram is uh, closed now. Yes, it is. Yeah. So luckily, we yeah we we went online in time with our with our web shop and all our digital uh, shops yeah. that we have at the moment. So yeah, we can balance things out a little since our physical shop is closed. Yeah, like okay. our shop. Yeah. And what is, uh, what is uh, the deadline if people want to get these presents before Christmas? Um, well, the thing that we're going to do next week, since all postal services will be pretty busy, mm -hmm. uh, like people who live in Maastricht or in Limburg, we're going to deliver at home. So, wow. So that people can actually get their gifts in time for Christmas. Fantastic. Or Christmas and the other thing that we're going to do, people can order on our uh, web shop and they will be able to come to our place and we can hand them the product that they bought. Brilliant, Wonderful. absolutely brilliant. Well, that, that's good to know. That's really good to know. Before you leave us tonight though, I understand you have a, a little competition for us yes, tonight. Yes, we do. Um, well, the thing that we're going to do, we're going to give away like two um, individual codes, like separate codes for people to get um, a discount for half a year, an unlimited discount. So wow. whatever they are going to buy, they get, they will get the, the discount. We have two uh, different codes that we will give away. The thing that we want people to do is... Uh, let us know who their favorite, like either movie, music, series, video game, anime character is, and why, of course. And mm. we will select two out of all the answers, and they will get like an unlimited uh, discount code. Fantastic. Wow. And uh, when, when do they have to send this in by? Um, well, they can do it now. So you can start doing that now uh, below this um, video or on the Facebook page of uh, House of D or the Instagram page. Um, and they can do it until December 23rd. Okay. And we'll, okay. And we'll uh, stop the competition at midnight. So um, do it before. And then we'll select uh, the the winners uh, during Christmas, and we'll let them know after Christmas. Brilliant! So wow. Well, mm -hmm. that's a fantastic prize. We'll we'll yeah. definitely uh, uh, put all the details about that on our uh, social media, of course. Um, yeah. And before you go, 
Um, yeah. Hashtag. Um, I can't imagine there's much going on there at the moment. There isn't really, but we like all the original ideas that are like, that come about now, you know, like people are, are thinking, well, it's more like the, the first wave of Corona. We go back to that now a little and there are all these initiatives of neighbors helping each other out, like um, different um, living quarters in Maastricht that, that have their own uh, groups to help the elderly do the groceries. And, yeah. and I think that's a good thing. We go back to March a little, not because of Corona, but all of because all of uh, all the initiatives that are. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, hopefully in the new year, um, hashtag will be uh, hashtag Maastricht will be full oh. of all the uh, yeah. upcoming uh, exciting events. So. And yeah. we also hope that people are going to shop locally. Most of the yeah. shops in Maastricht have their own delivery service, mm -hmm. or you can give them a call and they will open the shop for you personally, mm -hmm. or you can do some night shopping, like limited, but you can. Um, so make use of that. Also the restaurants that are Christmas well, boxes. We have seen on our the, the joint initiative between the Maastricht edition and hashtag, hashtag mm -hmm. uh, Maastricht, the uh, support your local business group that we have uh, running on Facebook. The past few weeks, there's been, I mean, I can't count the amount of posts on a daily basis that are going on there. The amount of support for local businesses at the moment and the initiative that's being shown by the local businesses has been fantastic. So, um, yeah, let's, mm. uh, let's keep up the good work and uh, keep supporting local businesses. Today, it's been lovely to see you. All the best to you and Michael. Um, have a fantastic Christmas. And uh, and we hope to see you in the new year. And uh, hugs are plenty when we do. <laughs> we will. The same for the three of you. Bye. Take care, darling. Bye, Bye for Bye. now. Happy Christmas. You too. Bye. 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 Oh, oh, bless. Yeah. Oh, well, isn't he lovely? Such lovely, a great lovely. guy. And such a great competition. Oh, wow. I know. I know. That's, uh, there's going to be some um, geeky fans out there. I've, I've got to say geeky because some, some of these, some of the fans of, of, of the uh, merchandise for particular cult type movies, I mean, they'll, they'll fill up their room with all kinds of stuff. Oh, yes. It's like a regular episode of Big Bang Theory, you know. And we should also mention that Denis and um, uh, House of D also sell a lot of uh, Game of Thrones merchandise, which, of, of oh. course, is also very uh, hot right now. So uh, it's a shame we can't enter the competition. <laughs> Worth having a look. Right, cool. I tell you what, we need to have some more music. Yes, yeah. please. We need some more music. We've, got, uh, we've been uh, lucky enough to have another one of our regulars on the show, Josh Island. Uh, sent Lovely. us uh, a little ditty earlier. It's short and sweet, but oh my God, it's got Christmas written all over it. So uh, here's Josh Island, and uh, I see it about his grandma. Lovely. Hey, everybody, over at Edition, I hope you're well. I wish you all the best for this holiday period. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and lots of health for 2021 because we're going to need it. Here is a little song for this wonderful period and uh goes something like this grandma got run over by a reindeer walking home from our house christmas eve you can say there's no such thing as santa but as for me and grandpa we still believe She'd been drinking too much eggnog And we begged her not to go But she forgot her medication And she staggered out the door into the snow When we found her Christmas morning At the scene of the attack she had hoof prints on her forehead, incriminating Klaus marks on her back. Happy Christmas! Excellent stuff. Nice one, Josh. Thank you so much 
for that. That certainly gets us in the Christmassy mood. What a saucy little grandma she is too. <laughs> So, um, actually, we don't have that much time left. It's all been whizzing past. So, um, I think it's probably time for, for Matt to be getting Dutch. Yes. So what I are thought, you for us this week, Matt? Well, I thought I'd look at some Dutch Christmas traditions because Dutch traditions don't just resolve around Sinterklaas on the 5th. There are other things going on as well. Um, so, the Netherlands has both Sinterklaas and the Cursed Man. Um, and the cursed man, in I suppose English, is of course Santa Claus. So there's both Santa Claus and Santa Claus. So technically, mm. the children could get two lots of presents in one month. Like very Ooh. fortunate. I think for the tradition, most people go for Santa Claus on the fifth. So you just get one set of presents, and then on the on the twenty fourth, twenty fifth, twenty sixth, then you get like the dinner and stuff rather than the presents. You choose one or the other. Most families. Or if you're very lucky. Maybe you'll get two sets of presents. I don't know. But, mm. yeah. Um, oh, I so think that, for some people, if they have their birthday over Christmas, that probably works quite well. Oh. Because, because then you, you can separate the two. Yeah. It can depend, though. Sometimes if you have a birthday in December, you might only get a birthday gift or a Christmas gift. Oh, yeah. I've only allowed oh. that to happen once, and it's this birthday. The only time I've allowed it to happen, but I think yeah. that's fair, Matthew. But on a, a normal like year, you need both. Exactly, mm. because otherwise, yeah. if all your presents come in one month, it's very like, like throughout the year, it's not really fair. But anyway, it's tough going. Yes. Don't get stuck on that one. <laughs> so, like many other countries, the Netherlands has its own Christmas songs, um, and some of the the more famous ones I thought I'd, I'd look at. And there's one called Flappy. Does anybody know the Flappy song? No. <laughs> well, it doesn't Flappy, sound very, doesn't sound very festive. <laughs> well, well, Flappy is um, about a young Dutch boy who is really sad because he's lost his pet rabbit and he just can't find this rabbit anywhere and he's going around. And eventually it turns out <laughs> his pet rabbit is the Christmas dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and he's very sad about this, of course. <laughs> Um, but it's a very humorous oh, Dutch Christmas song. Um, <laughs> that tells you a lot about that. <laughs> well, if you've not heard that song yet, go seek it out. It's called Flappy. Um, it's probably good to practice your Dutch. For a, for a rabbit? Sorry? Should it be floppy for a flappy. rabbit? I don't know. Maybe that's his name. Flappy. I'm just saying. I mean, you know, not that I'm being picky. I suppose but, his yeah. ears would still flap. Oh, but that's the least of his problems, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Flappy. What a oh, yeah. horrid story, it's Matthew. Flat. Well, there's another one called Ainsam Accursed, which is by Andre Haases. Merry and, Christmas! Yeah, and it's about his time in jail at Christmas when he was really alone. <laughs> oh, my God! Um, yeah, so you can go check those two songs out for, for taste of Dutch Christmas. I think we need some Michael Bublé ASAP. <laughs> yeah, listen to that after. Um, so yeah, so that's the music. Um, but also there's food, which is the important bit, of course. Um, so you can have rabbit, like Flappy, um, or you can have um, a banquet staff, which is a marzipan-filled pastry in the uh, shape of staff. Trace is not a fan. Um, a cursed crans, which no, is a, no a wreath shape pastry with dried fruit and nuts, like a biscuit. Oh, nice. nice. And then, of course, towards New Year, you have Ollie Bollen, yeah. which is the Dutch answer to donuts, and they come in all different shapes and sizes and flavours and toppings. Um, and I'm sure you can probably still find them. I think there'll be stores around, but I'm not entirely oh, sure. Oh, the supermarket has them for sure. Yeah, yeah. Get them sure very the, supermarket. The so it's like a, a yeah. big deep fried dough ball. And often has fillings like Very apple, healthy. chocolate, or custard. The, the apple ones are nicest. Yes, mm, I like okay. the apple ones. Mm. Um, so, but Christmas dinner, so like the actual meal, a lot of people have something called gourmet. So um, it's like a hot plate that you have in the middle of the table with little pans, and then you can like cook stuff on it, raw meat and vegetables yeah. and stuff. Um, which, when I first came here, I thought was really weird, a very Dutch thing to have at Christmas. Yeah. 
So if you if you are staying in the Netherlands this year and you want to try out a traditional Dutch Christmas, that's a good way to go. Mm-hmm. Or you can have mm-hmm. a, a roast meal, um, which is more common outside of the Netherlands, I think. Um, but you, if you do have one here, game meat is very popular. So there's venison, goose, hare, rabbit, like lappy. Or like I'm having a pheasant. So there's lots of different options for you to try out. And <laughs> one last thing, there's um, the traditional midwinter horn blowing tradition um, oh, in the lead up to midwinter. So I suppose this weekend and now um, mm. in the east of the country, um, people carve long horns out of elder trees um, and they stand and blow yeah, this horn. I thought something else was going to be... Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> they blow this horn to announce the coming of the dawn. I bet you and do. I, and I'm sure oh, wow. they uh, endear themselves to their neighbours. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's the Dutch Christmas traditions. Okay. If you want to find out more, you can just go on, go on Google and find out. But you should definitely check out those songs because um, they really help you integrate into Dutch culture. Oh. Wow, well, there's a thing. <laughs> I'm, um, yes, I'm a bit flappy gasted. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm so proud of you. Well done, dear. That was a good one. <laughs> Actually, um, uh, Eric has said that Todd Rundgren has brought out an English version of Flappy this year. Oh, there you go. So, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, um, he's actually sent us a link that we can check out. So, oh, thank you, you, Eric. Go check thank it you, out. Eric. Yeah, go check it out. And, uh, and of course, uh, Matt, um, speaking of traditions, there's lots of other um, interesting history and tradition, traditional stuff to learn on the Meet Maastricht. To website. Oh, of course. Yes. So this this Monday I posted about the Sintsavas Kirk Basilica, mm-hmm. I think actually. So you if they're doing that's their latest podcast. Um so if you go on Meet Maastricht, go on their website, check out their podcast. They have something new every week and you can find out all about the different history of the buildings in the city. Fantastic. Excellent Lovely. stuff. Lovely stuff. Um well uh, we are coming Where towards the end. Before we, we, before we leave, though, what should we do? Should we have Tracy or should we have some more music or should we leave the music to the end? What do you think? Let's go out on mm, music. That's a good one. Let's, we'll yeah, go yeah, let's music, go out. Right? We'll go out on the music. Excellent. But I, okay, I do have a music related titty bitty, though, so that kind of works oh, out quite well, doesn't it? Very well. Now, Excellent. Many of us are here in the Netherlands for Christmas. Christmas. We're not traveling back to our respective homelands. And of course, many of us are, you know, just going to be at home and perhaps just with one or two people or perhaps even by yourself. So it's uh, it's going to be a, a kind of a different Christmas this year. But all is not lost. Christmas Eve, 24th of December, there's a very, very special concert that's being uh, streamed online. Now, our former guest, Christina Petru, who very lovely guest, um, is a member of of a local song group called Verasing, and Verasing means surprise, and of course they played on word Verasing because they sing. It's very clever. Um, And these lovely ladies will be performing a very beautiful and nostalgic selection of Christmas carols and songs. It's going to be on Facebook Live, so the same uh, format that we're using here, starting at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. So it's maybe a lovely uh, option for to kind of fill in your evening a little bit. Um, now, we're not broadcasting that evening, so you have no e- excuse not tune in and listen to the lady for asking. Um, you can watch the concert live or I believe it's also going to be recorded and you can even watch it afterwards again. So you can even watch it Christmas Day if that, that suits better. So a lovely treat. And the ladies have got together and decided to do this because, and rightly so, they feel we could all use a little bit of Christmas cheer. So um, I think that's a very nice thing to put in your agenda. 24th of December, 7 p.m. For asking. Christmas Excellent stuff. And funnily enough, they are the very young ladies that are going to be playing us out this evening. So before we say goodbye, we're harassing. It's, it's, how did we know? My goodness, we sound so professional. It's it's quite <laughs> astonishing. Um, yes, as Tracy said, we're not going to be here next week. Uh, we are going to be here on the 27th. We're going to put this all on social media because um, uh, there there is a slight change in the scheduling. But we wanted to maybe catch up with you guys 
during the Christmas week. So yes. uh, as we are all going to be locked up, we thought, well, it might be nice midweek to maybe uh, catch up with you guys, have a chat with you. You're more than welcome to, to join the fun. Um, come and have a, uh, send us messages, call in if you want to and tell us how your Christmas is oh, going. Yes. But we shall be here on the 27th. So That's the Sunday. That is the Sunday. Uh, yes. yes. Good, good for pointing out, Tracy, because I know for a fact the days are a bit of a blur during the Christmas <laughs> week, for sure. True. In fact, you're probably going to have to remind me to actually I'll take a note. Myself. Yes. Please give me a product. Say, Joe, you're supposed to be on the bus strict edition now. So that's, uh, that's, that's probably very wise. Thank you to uh, Denis who joined us. It was lovely to see Jason um, somewhere in the US of A. We're not quite sure where. It all looked um, uh, very suspicious, <laughs> to say the least. But he's, he, he's out there somewhere uh, sorting the USA out for us as we speak. And we're very you grateful for that. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Um, thank you to Michelle Lynn, to Josh Ireland for supplying uh, us with some uh, music this evening. Absolutely fantastic. Um, you can catch up with them over the Christmas period as well by going onto their Facebook pages. There's lots of concerts and videos and all sorts of stuff going on with them. Um, we do wish you a very, very Merry Christmas, however you're going to be spending it uh, over the, the, the next few days. Uh, we know it's going to be tough. Um, but you know what? Just pick up the phone, call your loved ones, call your friends, call your family. Let's uh, mm. all hold hands virtually together. We can get through this Christmas. It's just one Christmas and we can do this together online, virtually, by a pigeon carrier if we have to. But we can do this. We shall see you on the 27th. Thank you so much for joining us and playing us out. As Tracy said, the lovely ladies from Barassing. Tune into their concert on the 24th. We will see you on the 27th. Merry Christmas to yep. you all. Merry Christmas. But as long as you